I'm an environmental engineer and I'd like to point out a very important health issue that almost no one is fully conscious of. Most traditional societies have extremely strict rules and guidelines governing food preparation and they place a great emphasis on this. In America, unfortunately, we've forgotten almost all of this traditional advice relating to food. Let me just point out one of the many critical aspects related to this. If you're like most Americans, you probably get a headache fairly often, and you probably get colds fairly often. Most of us grow up thinking that this is normal. I certainly did. But actually, that's not normal. We get these problems because of toxins that we've ingested through our food. And we ingest these toxins because we've forgotten traditional health advice. Now you may say, well, I can live with an occasional headache or the occasional cold, which is true. But these problems are only the tip of the iceberg. Toxins in our food supply relate to practically every inflammatory and autoimmune disease, everything from lupus to fibromyalgia to asthma to acne. But I'd like to focus on one of the most unknown and insidious ways in which some of these toxins affect us. If you're like most Americans, you'll occasionally hear a song that gets stuck in your head and repeats over and over and over. This is a feedback mechanism. What's happening is that your thought process has gone into a loop. This is not normal. This is not normal. Now this occasional repetition of a song in our heads is just one tiny manifestation of an underlying hidden trend that has a profound impact on our entire mental process. You see, when our brains have this type of a feedback mechanism, it becomes very difficult to think clearly. Our thought process continually loops back upon itself. It becomes almost impossible to see the world with clarity because our preconditioned thoughts loop back upon themselves again and again and again. So what are the toxins which cause this problem? Well, one large group is bacterial and fungal neurotoxins which is a fairly unstudied field. You see, when food rots, a fascinating process begins. Bacteria and fungi populate the food, and they're waging chemical warfare against each other. The bacteria produce antifungal agents so that the bacteria can digest the rotting food, and the fungi produce antibacterial agents so that the bacteria will be wiped out and the fungi will be able to populate the food. But the bacteria and the fungi are also producing neurotoxins so that higher animals, like humans, won't eat the food and the bacteria and the fungi will be able to digest it instead. You see, neurotoxins are the most efficient manner for a bacteria to damage a larger mammal. If a bacteria produced a type of toxin that acted on some other cell in the body, it would have to produce a lot more of that toxin. But with a tiny amount of neurotoxin, you can do a great deal of damage. For example, botulin can kill someone at extremely small dosages. And again, most of these neurotoxins are unstudied and many are certainly unknown to science. And it's likely that they have very subtle and wide-ranging effects on our nervous system. But it's not just that they affect us directly. They also biomagnify. Most traditional cultures have strong prohibitions against eating stale food and particularly against eating animals that eat carrion. And even yourself, you probably know that it's disgusting to eat a vulture, for example. Unfortunately, science doesn't really understand this process well. And so now we have a lot of animal husbandry practices which are basically poisoning us. When you look at the way that cows or pigs or chickens are raised in factory farms, a good percentage of their feed is often the waste byproducts from slaughterhouses. This helps the uh, animals to gain weight because the animals are ingesting toxins and the body swells up in order to dilute those toxins and so the farmer is able to make a lot more profit. The factory farm is able to make a lot more profit um, by selling these animals that are full of toxins and that have biomagnified toxins from other animals that they've eaten and from stale food that they've eaten.
When you eat meat from factory farms, it's a little bit like eating a vulture. Unfortunately, most Americans and science don't really recognize this connection, and it's not studied properly because there's really no funding motivation there. Now, this biomagnification of neurotoxins is only one of several ways in which our adulterated food supplies are severely impacting our mental and physical process. And unfortunately, most people will never really recognize it unless they make the incredible transition back to some kind of a semi-healthy traditional diet. Uh, and almost no one does that. And so almost no one recognizes just how severely our mental processing and our physical health is being impacted. And it's really an almost unstudied field. I only know of two very obscure books that even discuss this issue in the proper detail. One is my book, and the other one is called Genefit Nutrition, written by my friends Roman and Anchi. The discussion of the many different ways in which our adulterated food is impacting us, that discussion alone is very lengthy. And then the discussion of how to remove these adul adulterated food sources and how to detoxify your body, that's also a very lengthy topic. Once you're aware of what's happening, though, you can overcome these problems, and the results will probably amaze you.